everyone, welcome back. In this week's lesson, uh, we continue to build on what we started last week with Tone.js. Um, what we're going to do this week is move away from just raw oscillators to more of a structured sound. Uh, so we're going to talk about creating synths in Tone.js, and eventually we're going to build our way up to um, software that's going to create these generative sequences. Um, we're going to break this down into three parts today. Um, in this first part, we're going to cover how to create a synth in Tone.js. In the next part, we'll talk about uh, generating uh, musical notes from a specific scale and note mappings. And then in the last part, we're going to move towards creating a, a sequence that can uh, evolve over time. So let's uh, get started. Now, what we're going to do is, uh, uh, this is our example from last time. Uh, this is the, uh, <clears throat> the drone example. Uh, I'm going to make a copy of this uh, as a starting point. And now we're going to rename this to since. Uh, and the reason I'm going to use this sketch uh, is because I want to keep the waveform rendering. Um, we're not going to focus very much on the visual side of things for this week, so it's going to be nice to just have the waveform being drawn on the screen. Uh, and just as a reminder, we are using the Tone.js library. Uh, and uh, conveniently, because I've duplicated last week's sketch, uh, the library is already installed. Right? I got the link. Uh, oh, wait, this is that GUI. Uh, Tone is over here. Right, so we've already installed the library by including a link to the CDN, the Content Delivery Network. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're just starting a new sketch. Right, you can just Google uh, Tone.js CDN uh, and um, make your way there. And then for reference, again, this is the website for Tone.js that we're using. All right. <clears throat> uh, if you haven't watched part one I, uh, from last week, I suggest starting there first. So the first thing we'll do is just uh, get rid of some stuff before we start talking about synths. Uh, so I'm just going to hack away here at the sketch. Um, I'm going to get rid of the UI for now. Uh, we're going to keep this ready variable. Uh, if you remember, uh, this is a bit of a refresh. The, the way that we use this variable uh, is to wait for a mouse press, right? So when a mouse press comes in and the ready variable is still set to false, uh, we flip it up to true and then we call our audio initialization code. This is important because when you're doing audio in the browser, you're going to run into some permission issues if you try to initialize audio before the user has interacted with your sketch. So this ensures that we do all of our audio in it uh, at the appropriate time. And then we can also use this ready variable to do different things in draw so we can prompt the user to click so they know to click to get started. Uh, so we can use that variable as a kind of an on off switch. Uh, we're going to keep the waveform. Uh, the waveform is the object that allows us to look at the actual audio waveform, uh, and it's correctly connected to our master output, which is what we want. It's going to show us the sum of all the sounds that we're playing. <clears throat> uh, so I've deleted the oscillators. Um, we're going to get rid of that stuff, get rid of the different oscillator types, and uh, we're not going to build a UI in this um, demo, but um, I'll talk about at the end, you know, some ideas if you wanted to add one, some things to try. Uh, and then we're going to keep the, um, the the waveform rendering portion, uh, except we are going to uh, just get rid of the the code where we had the uh, we had it drawn as a closed shape. We are going to go back to uh, just drawing it as an open shape, and we're going to go back to no fill. Okay, so just so we see more like a typical waveform, and we'll keep the the slowly fading background that looks cool. All right. <clears throat> so if we hit play here, um, when we start, obviously, we get a, a straight line, there's no sound playing. So what we're going to do uh, in this lesson is we're going to create what's called a synth. Now in tone.js, uh, let's take a look at the API. Let's search for synth. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, synth objects we can create. Um, there's, you know, AM synth stands for amplitude modulation, FM frequency modulated. Uh, there's different kind of physical modeling synth. Um, we have synths that can be based on a sampler, which means you're providing um, audio sample of notes, and then the synth will interpolate between those. Um, we're just going to create the basic synth here. And what that object does is it's a, it's a combination of two objects in Tone.js, something called an omni oscillator which represents uh, all different types of oscillators we can use as the synth engine. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and then these oscillators are rooted through what's called an envelope. So when we talk about synths, uh, remember when we played our oscillators in the drones, it was a constant sound. When you add something called an envelope to a sound, it allows you to have 
an attack and a decay so that when we trigger a note, the, no the sound can fade in and last for a certain amount of time and eventually fade out. So a little closer to maybe like playing a note on the piano or plucking a string on an instrument. So we need both an oscillator and an envelope to form a synth. Uh, the Omni oscillator is neat because it sort of aggregates all the different oscillator types uh, into one. So we'll, we'll see, we'll be able to play around, uh, try different um, sort of textures for our synth. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try them once we create our synth object. So let's uh, give that a go in our P5 sketch. Now I'm going to add uh, this code here in uh, initialize audio, because again, this is where usually it's a good idea. Uh, you know, some of the objects you could actually get away creating in setup, but just to play it safe, all of the tone JS in it will all do inside initialize audio. Um, <clears throat> so let's declare, I'm going to create a global object here. Let's call it our synth. And uh, in initialize audio, we'll say synth equals new tone dot synth. Now, just like with the oscillator, it's important to take that object we created and connect its output to the tone.master. Okay. Now we could connect to tone.master or we could use the shortcut uh, simply called to destination in tone.js. Uh, this connects to the master output. Okay. Um, and that simply says, take the synth node and make sure its sound is routed to basically our speakers or our headphones so we can hear it. So if we simply create a synth, um, nothing happens. We have to tell the synth to play some notes. And uh, if we look, you know, just jumping in over here to the, um, jumping back to the synth documentation, uh, we can see that the synth has a number of properties, right? So you can manipulate its envelope, its oscillator, right? For example, uh, and then it has some functions we can use on it. And the function we're gonna use right now is called trigger attack release. So this is going to trigger both the attack and then the release after a certain amount of time. And uh, here you can see it's passing in a note as the parameter. Uh, we're gonna stick to frequencies in this example. In the next video, we'll start talking about notes. Uh, so it says, which note do you wanna play or which frequency and for how long? Now this 8N here in uh, Tone.js, this is a notation they use for time. Um, <clears throat> this is gonna be important in this week's lesson because we're gonna start to create a sequence and we'll have to think about time. So 8n, uh, if we think about um, one measure of uh, or we can one a bar of the, the sound, uh, an 8 note right, is taking that bar and dividing it by n. Uh, if you say something like an 8 note, right, a, a 4n, like a quarter note, would be taking one bar of, the, of our song and dividing it in slices of 4 and so forth. So the, um, the n qualifier here is a bit of a divider. It, it, it denotes a divider. So it's dividing the time division by eight, by four, by 16, 32. We'll experiment with that. Uh, and the other uh, letter we can use here is a M for like a measure or a bar. So we, this acts more as a multiplier and we'll give examples of that uh, when we come to it. Um, so when we have a synth, we can basically play a note on it by calling trigger attack release. So let's try that. We're going to go into mouse pressed here and uh, <clears throat> We're not going to add an else here. We'll say if if ready was false, we're going to initialize the audio and then we'll just jump right in. We'll tell our synth to trigger its attack release cycle, uh, and then we'll give it a frequency. Let's say 220 hertz and a duration. Let's put in a eight note. So now every time I click the mouse, uh, we can hear our synth playing a note that's going to last for one eight note. And we'll see if we play with different durations here, right? A quarter note is longer than an eight note and a one note is a f the full bar. Lasts longer. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, don't worry about the warnings sometimes here. I'm getting warnings with map. Um, once in a while with the, the mapping here, drawing the buffer, um, the timing is such that the, uh, the audio isn't quite ready and we get a little warning. Um, so you can just disregard those. Okay? Uh, and then the opposite of M uh, would be, I guess one M would be the same as one N. Uh, and then you can make really long notes uh, once you go into using the M, right? So this note would last for two whole measures, uh, or two bars. Okay? So the M, think of it as like your, your multiplier, your 
making longer notes. And then the N is a divider, right? So for example, 30 second notes are very short. <clears throat> so let's go back to just an eight note here. Uh, and this is the frequency. So obviously this could be, uh, you know, any frequency. Um, 440, this would be a, an A4. So we can play a frequency. Uh, and we saw in the example, we can also play musical notes. I'm not going to delve on this. We're going to focus on the idea of notes from a scale in the next video. Uh, but this would be telling our synth to play a C note in the fourth octave. So let's go back to frequencies for now. Okay, so there we go. We have our synth. Now there's a few things we can play with, um, with this synth. Um, and uh, the main thing we're going to focus on today is just changing the oscillator type. So if we go back here to the top, uh, this synth has an omni ins oscillator inside of it. Um, and there's uh, all these different oscillator types that we can use. Uh, we can see them over here. Uh, so we have, we can use, so by default, uh, we can, we have a sine wave as our oscillator. Um, but we have these different, uh, kind of fancier versions. Uh, we can add the keyword fat in front of an oscillator, a waveform type, and we'll see what that does in a second. Um, let me just go back to here. Uh, so if we want to change the oscillator type, we're going to say synth. And then inside of it, it has an oscillator object, and then we will set its type to, uh, so the default here is sine, right? So this is our sine. Um, we can set it to a triangle, right? Same oscillator as we covered last week when we did the, the drones. Um, we also had a square wave, and we also had a sawtooth wave. Now there's different variations. Um, there's, if we go back to sine, uh, we could say something like an AM sine. AM stands for amplitude modulated. Um, it's gonna, we're not gonna delve into what these uh, different algorithms really do, but just you can experiment with these different types that are available uh, just to get different flavors. Uh, this is a frequency modulated sine wave um, where you have basically another frequency modulating the dominant frequency, and you can get more interesting textures that way. Um, when you use the fat type of oscillator, what it does is it adds a few other oscillators inside of it that are slightly detuned from your main note. You see, like there's a few others, um, and it creates this kind of more, um, this fatter sound, I guess. It's still one note, but we can hear there's detuned oscillators in there. Uh, and by the way, my uh, my waveforms here are a little bit smaller because I uh, I've turned the volume down here. Remember nine decibels, just so that it doesn't overwhelm my voice when I'm talking. But you don't need to do this on your own sketch. Uh, so for this example, we're going to use a fat sawtooth wave. Get that sort of uh, synth wave vibe. Here. So we have a saw wave, a sawtooth wave, uh, but then it gets uh, detuned, and um, we have a few other waves inside the mix that create a little bit of movement. Uh, so you can experiment with different oscillator types. Um, if you wanted to go a little further, uh, this also would be a great place to think about adding a user interface where you could maybe select between different uh, types, right? You could create an array with these options. Um, we saw examples on how to do that in previous lessons. So I will leave that to you as an exercise if you want to try it out. <clears throat> okay. So um, this was the, the focus of this first lesson. Uh, we now have an oscillator that we can play with uh, and it can play notes. Now, of course, uh, these notes we could randomize, right? We could randomize our notes between 200 and let's say 440. Uh, so now it's just totally different random frequencies. Um, but what we're gonna try to do this week is build our way towards um, a generative kind of melodic sequencer. And uh, if we just play random frequencies, it doesn't sound really nice, right? These are not notes that have any kind of relationship to one another. So we're going to want to talk about creating more defined, specific musical notes, uh, and more precisely, musical notes that come from a given scale instead of just being totally random. Um, so we're going to delve into that in the next video. I will see you there.